is 25 minutes to two o'clock. I hope you're having a lovely, lovely afternoon this Monday afternoon. It's a little bit chilly out there, isn't it? But the sun's shining. We're alive. It's a good day. Now, winter is well and truly here. Now, even though I said it is beautiful outside, it is chilly in the air, but we're still out and about. We're still, you know, us South Aussies love going to a festival here or there, and there's lots to do. Just because it's cold outside doesn't mean you have to stay in. School holidays have also kicked off today, so if you're stuck at home and you're saying looking for some things to do, I've got a couple of people in the studio to help us out here. Good afternoon to Belinda Redman, the Deputy Director of the Adelaide Fringe Festival, Lisa Bishop from Music SA, and Alana Jaggett, who will perform a little bit number for us soon. Ladies, good afternoon. How are you all? Good afternoon. Hello. Hello, hello. Now, tomorrow is World Fringe Day. Can you tell us, how do we celebrate World Fringe Day? Oh, I think you should all go out there and have a party. (laughs) Excellent. Great idea. I love it, Belinda. So World Fringe Day uh, is the 70-year anniversary of Edinburgh Fringe tomorrow. So they started off the the concept of a fringe Mm -hmm. 70 years ago. And it really started a concept worldwide of open access, uncurated festivals. Um, So we're all going to celebrate. So there's over 200 fringes around the world and we're all getting together around the world to to celebrate this amazing non-curated arts festival as a great platform. So what are we doing here in SA? We're having an event um, really for our artists and VIPs to um, announce our great results for 2017 Fringe, Mm -hmm. which were fantastic. Uh, And we're actually having a bit of a Scottish party, a Calic, a Calip, which is a which is a dance. So uh, it should be lots of fun, kilts all round, and, yes. and scotch. So it sounds perfect. Oh, I like it. <laughs> Bit of scotch, nice. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, I'd love to know Adelaide Fringe. You know, it's it's certainly grown over the fifty seven years, hasn't it? It's it's an incredible festival that we have here. It's an amazing festival. It really does take over the entire city for a month mm. um, in summer. We have over 5,500 artists descend on Adelaide and Adelaide artists as well um, to really showcase what they have. There's over 450 venues. Every sort of nook and cranny seems to be taken over by the by the festival. We're the second biggest festival in the world. and um, Behind Edinburgh? Very proud of. Yeah, behind Edinburgh. So... That's an enormous achievement. It's incredible. And we've had lots of support from um, community and government and councils. They all see the platform as something that it almost doesn't have an end. It just keeps Mm. getting bigger and bigger. Because it's open access, everybody can be a part of it in any way they want. Now, did it start in 1960? It did next to, or should I say, behind the Adelaide Festival, which is a curated program. Um, There were some independent South Australian artists who felt sort of disappointed that they weren't included in the international program, so Mm -hmm. they decided they'd start their own little festival called The Fringe. So that's why it's Adelaide Fringe. It's the fringe of the Adelaide Festival. And, of course, over 57 years, The Fringe has grown to be such a big, big festival. And almost in comparison, the Adelaide Festival in size um, is a lot smaller, but we do work very well together. Now, the relationship between Adelaide and Edinburgh festivals, you know, we're the biggest in the Southern Hemisphere, Edinburgh's the biggest, but how far behind are we? Are we, are we playing catch-up or we've still got a long way to go? Um, if you're talking about numbers of shows, mm-hmm. uh, I don't, I can't imagine we'll ever get as big as Edinburgh. Like, we had 1,200 shows last year and they had 2,500. Yeah, wow. <laughs> so the numbers are big, Um But when we talk about uh, the deliverables like what we do for artists and the programs that we run around it, like our Honeypot program, which is our buyers and producers that we bring in Mm. from all around the world so artists come knowing that they might be picked up to do world tours, we do a lot of really innovative things that even Edinburgh is sort of looking and going, great, great, you're doing terrific stuff. So we do work closely with Edinburgh. Um, We go over and talk to artists. We encourage artists to come to Australia. We do staff, um, reciprocal staffing arrangements. And, yeah, we, we are quite close to Edinburgh. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of artists that, you know, from South Australia that are also starting to go over there too, which is fantastic. It, I guess, spreads the word, doesn't it, in a really organic way. 
Yes, and we've got this, uh, this will be the second year we're doing what's called Made in Adelaide. Oh, yeah. Um, and there's a whole team, this is supported by Arts SA, mm -hmm. uh, there's a whole team of um, artists going over to Adelaide and we're going to be doing a range of showcases, but it also gives us the opportunity to promote South Australian artists in Edinburgh and by coming together and creating the Made in Adelaide brand we're really creating a bit of a stronger platform to cut through with so many shows happening in Edinburgh. It gives us a great focus to say hey we're from Adelaide and we're a really united team of talented people. What are our performances like compared to what they put on show over there? Is the Australian flavour of entertaining really different? No, I mean, the wonderful thing about a non-curated open access festival is that anybody, however big, small or crazy their mm. idea, can give it a go. Um, I think by the time you leave South Australia to go and perform in Adelaide, you're already a good artist yes. that's um, got new work that's been tried and tested. Mm -hmm. So the um, support that's given by Arts SA goes to people who have work that we've seen and that we know is going to, you know, hold our heads high in South Australia. There's some fabulous artists going over. We're talking to the Adelaide Fringe Deputy Director, Belinda Redman. It is World Fringe Day tomorrow. I wanted to ask you, what's this goose chase smartphone scavenger hunt game? Oh. What's that about? <laughs> oh, it's a, a great fun game um, on your app, mm -hmm. uh, on your phone. So we started in 2017, Fringe, and it was our little game gamification of the fringe to get people out and about discovering all those 400 venues so it's a, a it's a fun game that you receive rewards and you have to sort of um check in do things prove it with video prove it with photographs we have over 12 we had over 12,000 entries this year golly it was amazing to watch it was so much fun so we've decided to take goose chase the fringe game to edinburgh yes so we're actually taking uh that game and that platform we've promoted it in edinburgh and it's about showing people what's available in the city but also we'll be promoting our south australian artists and where they are and what they're doing and promoting South Australia in general. So we're hoping the Fringe game mm -hmm. um, really takes off in Edinburgh as well and, and it does as well as it did in South Australia this year. And not a few nice prizes up for grabs too. Yeah, there's a trip uh, for two back to Adelaide for, from Qatar Airlines who um, have kindly donated this trip so we'll be able to bring some Scots out here and show them how yeah, amazing great. we are. Very <laughs> cool. Now, uh, you've got your report card, your annual review for the 2017 Adelaide Fringe is being released tomorrow. Can you give us a few hints, A+. Plus? Oh, plus a, plus a student. Plus plus plus. <laughs> I mean, we've just on this amazing trajectory of success. Great. Um, but we sold over six thousand five hundred tickets this year, which is just incredible. Six hundred fifty thousand. Six hundred fifty. Oh my gosh, that's that's incredible. Six hundred fifty thousand Incredible. So, how much is that worth then? It's well, sixteen point two million dollars goes back into artists' pockets. So, wow. uh, the way the fringe works is we we are the the host for the artists. Mm -hmm. um, actually, more will be going back into the artists' pockets next year and making us the most affordable festival um, in the world for artists. We will hope. Is that um, that new ticketing system where if it's what twenty or thirty dollars? or less than the artist's pockets that is that right that's is that right so yeah. if, uh, for a ticket under 35 dollars right. all the money goes back to the artist previously the the artists have paid a small clip um to run the plat help us run the platform mm -hmm. but uh, the government has just given us some extra funding so the artists for tickets under 35 dollars they will have no fees which makes it very very affordable and very appealing so, so are you expecting a boost of people wanting to come here next year that maybe not or maybe who couldn't afford it you know, yeah, to, I think to show so. in previous years. Yeah, I think so. I think that we'll have a lot of interest in coming to Adelaide because it is affordable. Mm. And, of course, when we're attracting European artists, it's expensive to get to Australia. So we encourage them to do what we call the circuit, which includes some other festivals around Australia. But it means by starting here, they're starting with more money in their pocket, which is great. It's great for artists to, to actually see that the government's really helping them. We're going to take a very short break, but we've got some fringe entertainment coming up. Won't be bad, won't be long. Good afternoon, it's 10 minutes to 2 o'clock and we're talking about our state and I'm joined in the studio at the moment by with uh, Belinda Redman who is the Adelaide Fringe Deputy Director, also Music SA General Manager. Lisa Bishop, there is a music festival happening, Umbrella 
Winter City Sounds and we are joined by one of the musicians from that festival as well, Alana Jagger, who is going to perform for us very, very soon. But Lisa, I wanted to ask you, can you tell us a little bit about Music SA and also this Umbrella Music Festival? Sure. Music SA, we're, we're a little not-for-profit company mm-hmm. and we support and develop and promote original contemporary South Australian musicians. So we help them on their career path from entry level right through to hopefully exportable where they're like the hilltop hoods. Yeah. Um, and we do that through training courses and workshops and performance opportunities mm-hmm. and we run the South Australian Music Awards and we also run things like Umbrella Winter City Sounds. So what is Umbrella? Well, it's a two-week live music festival. So we've got 300 live music shows across 100 venues and other locations um, throughout Adelaide and the suburbs. And it's a two-week celebration of contemporary music, Mm -hmm. predominantly local South Australian contemporary musicians. And it just gives people a good reason to... um, throw that throw rug off and get off the couch, <laughs> get away from the Netflix binge and yeah. come into town and support some local musicians. Because I think, um, you know, a lot of our cultural activity is condensed to the first quarter of the year. So we've yes. got frantic February and mad March. So Umbrella is really trying to kind of level out that year-round calendar of festivals and events. And we link it with other winter music activations like Guitars in Bars and the Mm -hmm. Beer and Barbecue Festival and the um, Australian Independent Record Label Association Conference and Awards. So it's we're really trying to position um, July as winter's answer to the fringe and we're doing it around music. And I think that's really important because, well, your listeners might not know, but the United Nations back in um, late 2015 designated Adelaide as a city of music. Did it? I didn't know that. So this is a really good program to really let the rest of Australia know that Adelaide is indeed a city of music. Well, you know... Belinda, you'd be you know so so proud of what you and your team create at the beginning of the year, and you walk the streets and you know the beautiful accents from all around the world that the fringe attracts. You know so many visitors to our great state, and then you know we have the cabaret festival. Is it you know it kind of tinkers on a little bit and then sort of drops off. Mm. How important is it to keep that brand, that festival, that music brand and reputation flowing throughout the whole year? I mean, we do kick it off. Very well. In fact, uh, the largest genre outside comedy is music in the fringe. So Mm. we have some amazing musicians in the state and it is a great way to celebrate them. But I think that you're right about kicking off the knee rug and getting out there. There is some incredibly talented people out there, but there's also some fantastic venues that people need to get into. And I think Mm. music highlights, it helps the venues get engaged and involved in winter, um, but it also showcases the fantastic art that we have. Lisa, who does the uh, Umbrella Festival appeal to? Well, we're hoping it will will appeal to anyone, whether they're 5 or 95. So it's been deliberately programmed with a whole variety of genres. I think there's 21 different contemporary music genres in it. So Mm -hmm. you've got everything from rock, punk, hip-hop, acoustic, folk, reggae, electronic. Mm -hmm. Uh, We've got free events about 75 free events as well as ticketed events during the day, at night, earlier, like so people in the city can go to them straight after work. We've got events on trams. We've got um, showcases in Rundle Mall. We've got, um, as Belinda said, a lot of the shows are happening in venues we didn't want to necessarily create a hub Mm. we wanted the music to be where it is usually during the year and um, venues that support live music deserve that because winter can be a pretty tough time and and they're not getting the commercial outcomes that they really need and also musicians need the work and sure uh, i mean umbrella happened for the first time last year and many of the musicians i spoke to said i've never been this busy in winter yeah I'll tell you what, our winter 
is really not that bad at all. Um, admittedly, I wasn't here last year for the evil Knievel winter that we <laughs> experienced, but, you know, there really, there's no reason why we shouldn't be going out, rug up, put a beanie on and a coat. We're not, you don't get that awful wind or rain that you do in Melbourne. I agree. It's a pretty mild winter. Yeah, it's beautiful. Um, it's a great it's, time to go out and listen to a bit yeah. of music, grab a glass of red or whiskey, whatever, whatever floats mild your boat. Mild wine, yeah, in front yes. of an open fire. That sounds nice. Um, what it? are some of, some of the big acts? What are some of the highlights? What should we be going to see? Okay, well, as I said, it's mainly local South Australian artists. Mm -hmm. um, there's a whole lot of shows. So um, some of the highlights for me would probably be on the 15th of July. So Umbrella Goes, I should have said, from the 14th of July to the 30th of July. On the Saturday night of the first weekend, there's a free family-friendly event in Victoria Square called Aquabeats, yes. where there's a lineup of bands and they play to the movement of the water in the fountains is Gorgeous. like matched to the, the beat and the bass. So that'll be pretty amazing. Um, there's an electronic festival on a Wednesday night straight after work in Cinema Place. There's, uh, as I said, tram sessions, mm -hmm. which has come out of Melbourne, has come to Adelaide. Um, from the 20th, 21st, 21st to the 24th of July, there'll be a stage in Gawler Place in Rundle Mall and there'll be about three or four acts a day there. Um, on the 14th, our opening night of Umbrella, there's a lovely little show at the producers called the Winter Island Festival, uh, which is uh, headlining uh, African intelligence. And so they were a sh an act that played at WOMAD this year. Uh, so that'll be a good one to get along to. And there's a couple of shows that uh, Alana is playing in, actually. On Friday the 28th of July, there's a show called Scouted, and that's 15 bands across five stages at the Producers and the Crown and Anchor in town. So that'll be a nice one to attend. And also there's a show, a free show at the Ed Castle on the 15th of July called Southern Twang. Um, that kind of showcases Americana music. It's this new genre that's being really kind of picked up big time in Adelaide at the moment. And um, yeah, Alana's playing there. Well, Alana, I think it's time that we introduce you. Welcome to the show. So you're playing in, in Umbrella, and what do you love about the festival? Oh, I don't know. It's just lots of my, you know, friends and sort of colleagues are are out there at that time, and there's mm -hmm. just always something to good do. Good vibe around yeah, town. Yeah, it's a good vibe, yeah. Now, you're singing for us. What are you singing? Um, I'm singing um, a song of mine called Wilderness. Yes. Um, coming out on my upcoming debut EP, which is out in October, so. And what's Wilderness about? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> don't, don't ask. ask just, I'll like just that. play. <laughs> All right. Well, <laughs> introducing Alana Jagged playing Wilderness. Thank you. you say you tame the raging ocean. love her any other way You say your love burns like fire Well I'm not warm from the flame Cause there's a wilderness on my Train. 
gorgeous. What a beautiful voice. <laughs> Ladies, thank you very much for joining thank me. You, Happy Fringe Day tomorrow. Enjoy it. Yes, sir. And red, uh, winter reds, I was going to say. I've got winter reds on my mind at... Winter Red at the Umbrella Festival, perhaps. Well, yeah. <laughs> Good luck with the festival and enjoy it. Yeah. Thank you. It's on from... From the 14th of July to the 30th of July. Perfect. And it actually includes Winter Reds. <laughs> there you go. That's why I read it in my notes. <laughs> Thank you, ladies, very much.